Meanwhile, the U.S. is warning that aid to Egypt could suffer if Egypt persists in prosecuting 19 American aid workers who have now been referred to a court. The Americans, including the son of the cabinet secretary, Ray LaHood, were caught up in raids against non-governmental organizations in December. Some have actually taken refuge in the United States Embassy in Cairo. The issue is sparking serious bipartisan anger in Congress, and that could cause some serious fallout for Egypt's military authorities. Our Pentagon correspondent, Chris Lawrence, is standing by with a closer look. Chris? Well, well, some of those Americans have been branded as fugitives by Egyptian authorities because they left the country. But they're actually in a better position now because the U.S. is unlikely to ever force them to go back to stand trial. At issue are those Americans still in Egypt. As you mentioned, some have taken sanctuary at the embassy. And today, the State Department issued a public plea for the other Americans to come to the embassy, get some space, meet with the lawyers, and start to prepare for what could be coming. Egypt is pressing ahead with the prosecution of 19 Americans, civilian aid workers accused of using foreign funds to stir up dissent. Their offices have been raided, equipment confiscated, all while the U.S. sends Egypt $1.4 billion, most of it to the military. We have said clearly that these actions could have consequences for our relationship, including uh, regarding our assistance programs. But some demand more than mere threats. They want to cut the purse strings. 41 outraged members of Congress signed a letter to Secretaries Panetta and Clinton and Egypt's military leader. The Republicans and Democrats are calling on the U.S. to cut funding until Egypt stops going after the aid groups. I don't think we should send them one thin dime until they release those Americans that they're holding over there, that they're planning to try uh, it's just it's just it's just terrible. It's clear the military is just trying to pick a fight with the United States because it does not have the support of its own people and is trying to play the American card. Egypt was the first Arab nation to buy American F-16s. It plans to add well over a thousand Abrams tanks to its arsenal. The two militaries have trained together. The official Pentagon line is the relationship is strong. We just have to push through this crisis. But privately, a senior defense official admits there's been frustration that after all the years of building this partnership, the Pentagon has not been able to have greater influence. Some analysts say the crisis has exposed a real rift. They expect the U.S. and Egypt to still maintain some relationship. But the strategic alignment that Washington and Cairo have enjoyed over the course of the last three decades is clearly coming to an end and again today the state department issuing an open invitation for those remaining americans charged to come to the u.s embassy there in cairo the senior defense official i spoke with said the u.s has to keep giving military aid to egypt because he feels no matter what sort of government emerges from the upcoming elections the Egyptian military will remain a pillar of that country, and he says the U.S. has to maintain a relationship with that military. Wolf. You know what's shocking to me is that not only Leon Panetta, the defense secretary, the secretary of state, Hillary Clinton, but the president of the United States, President Obama, they've all personally spoken with General Tantawi, who's the head of the military regime over there in Egypt, that have made the case, you know, you got to stop this if you want U.S.-Egyptian relations to stay on track, if you want the U.S. Congress to continue providing $1.5 billion a year in assistance to Egypt. And General Tantawi doesn't seem either capable or willing to do anything. I don't know what they're saying at the Pentagon about this, but it's pretty shocking when you think about it. That's right, Wolf. Uh, publicly, at least, the Egyptian officials are sort of passing the buck to the judiciary, saying, look, we can't interfere with judicial affairs. That's a, ju a judicial matter. But in reality, everyone knows that the military exerts enormous influence over the, the interim government, so to speak, uh, that's in power now. And so the, the failure to do something on this issue, uh, many people believe, is entirely in the hands of the Egyptian military. All right, uh, Chris Lawrence at the Pentagon, thank you. An enormously important story.